Right, here we are, back by popular demand. Uh, we have a video which talks about the five levels of market sophistication. Uh, now, a sensible thing to do would have been to probably put a link to this um, somewhere near this presentation, so I will take care of that. Um, but these principles that I'm about to talk to you about uh, came from the book Breakthrough Advertising by Eugene Schwartz. So if you haven't got hold of a copy of that book, um, it is worth it, but it will cost you um, a few bob. Um, it's only available, you can get it on Amazon, but it's super expensive. But you can also get it from a website called Titans Marketing, which is based in the States. It will cost you $125 plus $30 shipping, so uh, about £100. But it is one of the best investments that you'll possibly ever make in any kind of education around advertising bar obviously doing fearless business. So, um, and and this this one particular model is a model which kind of came out of that book. I've adapted it slightly so it works better for the sorts of clients which we work at work with at Fearless Business. But essentially this is um, a very simple model which explains how to understand your audience and how to speak to your audience better um, so that we avoid all of that buy my shit type marketing because Believe it or not, we've all been there. Even I've been there and done that kind of marketing. It's not pretty. People see right through it these days um, and we don't want to be that person. There's a much better way of appealing to our target audience's uh, wants and desires. Um, so first of all, you've obviously got to understand. So these are the prerequisites before I go into the five levels of market sophistication. You've got to know who your target market is. You've also got to understand exactly where it is that they um, hang out. What do I mean by that? So um, uh, essentially um, your your target market and uh, they will, um, lo so let's say for example, it's middle-aged men. Well, what sort of things are middle-aged men into? And that will start to indicate where they might hang out. So where, what I mean by where they hang out, in this instance, it's probably going to be online somewhere. That's how most marketing works these days. Could be physical, could be digital, uh, could be online. It could be, um, you know, your audience may even still read magazines and books and things like that. They might listen to audio books. Uh, then you can start to get more specific. So if they're online, at which platform are they on? Facebook, LinkedIn, et cetera, et cetera. Then, then you can get another layer deep. So on Facebook, which groups do they um, uh, are they in? Uh, what pages do they like? And all sorts of things like that. So it's basically about drilling down into exactly where, um, who your target market is. Where do they hang out? Um, you know, what sort of um, people and things are they interacting with? And these are all clues which help you to understand exactly which level of sophistication they are at, which you'll find out about in a moment or two. The other thing is um, to understand exactly how they feel right now. Um, so, um, let's say, let's take a successful middle-aged man who works in the city, who is climbing the career ladder. He's going to be feeling very diff different to maybe a middle-aged, middle-aged man who is slightly overweight and not fulfilling his career needs. So you've also got to understand exactly how they feel to also understand where they are in their levels of market sophistication. Cause one, it's not about their level of education or anything like that. Um, it's more so about um, their understanding of their needs. Uh, so if you understand how they feel, you're going to have a better understanding about um, their needs. And it's those needs which lead to their collective desire. So the collective desire is that transformation moving from A to B. So in this particular instance, the example I've given is middle-aged men who want the six-pack back, which they had in their 20s. Um, so that we've identified our target market and what their collective desire is. Um, and from here, we can then start to understand how sophisticated a buyer they are. So level one of market sophistication, I'm going to go through each of the levels just with a few bullet points just to um, explain exactly what I mean. So level one, they are problem um, unaware. So you know who your target market is. You know what their collective desire is. However, they're not, they don't understand really what their collective desire is. They don't really know what their problem is. 
um you know and there's always varying degrees of this so um they might have absolutely no idea about whether they've got a problem or they, they might have a slight inkling that they've got a problem but it's not really on their agenda at the moment so when we talk about problem where it's not like it's non-existent it might actually be there it's just they're not ready to act on it or do anything about it um so the collective desire is the intention the i was about to say intent the intention to do something um, with with a specific problem. So if you put a solution or your brand or your product or price in front of them, they're going to be completely blind to this because they don't even know they've got a problem. So they're not even looking for a solution. And so if you start doing buy my shit type marketing and you're getting no responses because you're putting it in front of an audience which has no collective desire. So right now they just require a little bit of education to show, to demonstrate to them that they might have a problem. So we start to tell stories. So, you know, when we're talking about our middle-aged man, so we tell a story about Fred who's 53 and his um, confidence is at an all-time low. He's two stone overweight. So we start to tell stories and then what's happening is there'll be somebody reading that post who go, oh, actually there's a couple of things in there which are kind of similar to my, where I'm at. Oh, I didn't realize it had impacted my, my confidence. Oh, actually, so we start to, you're just educating somebody and just kind of holding the mirror up and saying, hey, uh, we're over here. and Look, we've got some interesting stuff to say. Um, so that's level one. It's where we're problem aware, uh, unaware, sorry. Level two is then where we become um, more problem aware. So we're moving up into a scale of, again, scale of one to 10 on how, how um, acute our level of awareness is around the problem. So at least now we've got an acknowledgement of the problem. So... Um, we're not blissfully going around burying our head in the sand anymore. There's actually an acknowledgement of the problem and a bit of a desire to maybe start to think about doing something about it. Um, however, level two audiences generally feel pretty overwhelmed with whatever the situation is that they're in currently. And they don't really know where to start in terms of resolving that problem. So they're kind of just walking around, just feeling a bit down, don't really understand like why they feel like this or kind of like what's led led to it. You know, they're just kind of looking for a bit of, possibly just a bit of positive affirmation just to make sure that, um, you know, a bit of reassurance to um, remove some of that overwhelm and kind of just be told that a bit of a hug, that what they're feeling is perfectly normal. Um, but what is clear is that there is now um, a, a bit of an intention to actually do something, like I said earlier on. And what the action is at this point is that we would start to introduce, like, again, it's it's moving up that scale of initiative from just basic education and a few uh, bit of kind of um, uh, attraction sort of advertising at this point. And now we're starting to put a little bit more something specific in front of them. So this is where our product assets start to come in. Uh, marketing assets, sorry, well, product assets, both the same thing, but marketing assets start to come in. And we might start to introduce things like lead magnets um, to show level audiences, level two audiences, five to 10 things that they could start doing to resolve the problem. We want to make sure that there's very little friction here, that these things that we're showing them, the five to 10 things that we're showing them, could, they're very simple things that they could do. So let's say, for example, I mean, I, I worked with a um, personal trainer and um, before we started working together, um, I was like, I want to lose a bit of weight. I put on um, about two stone, two and a half stone because I'd started swimming, was eating far too much and various things like that. And I was like, I want to just rebalance my body, lose a bit of bulk. And he said, well, look, I've done this um, little PDF guide. There's 10 things in here which you could do. You don't have to do them all. And I picked out three things, which uh, one was um, uh, eat the healthiest thing on the menu. I was traveling a lot and going out and having meals with people. So eat the healthiest thing on the meat, uh, on the menu. So uh, low fat salads, things like that. Second thing was um, drop caffeine. So I stopped drinking coffee for a while. And the third thing that I chose out of the 10 was um, reduce, reduce sugar intake. And I pretty much tried to cut it out entirely. And hey, presto, within two months, I'd lost um, two stone, which was pretty impressive. So that obviously built up my trust. And then eventually I ended up moving up to level three, level four, level five and becoming a client of this guy. Um, because then we kind of moved into, um, you know, some more structured kind of exercise and keeping my body balanced. Um, so like I said, just gent lead magnets here where it's low friction, five or 10 simple things they could start doing to resolve the, the problem. It just builds up a little bit more trust. It's free. So there's, there's um, very little resistance. That's what we want to create for level two. Remember, they're feeling overwhelmed. So we want to keep resistance as low as we possibly can. 
So now they're starting to move into this situation whereby the, the desire to change their current circumstances is, um, is, is much more um, acute now. So we're moving into this level of solution awareness. What they're starting to do is um, search for very specific um, solutions on Google. They're starting to educate themselves around what the options are, what products are available, what services are available to um, change their, to help them change their current set of circumstances. And maybe what they've done at this point is narrow it down to three or four different businesses, coaches, consultants, options. And hopefully you are one of them. Um, at this point, you want to proactively be showing a level three audience inside your inner circle. So what you're doing is you are um, kind of saying, well, hey, look, we've built a community around this. Why don't you join our Facebook group? Or um, uh, listen, we've got a, we've got, I've, I have got this program which might be able to help you, but I want to see whether it's a good fit or not. So how about you just take a next step, again, low resistance, low friction, and we'll hop on a call for 15 minutes or 30 minutes and I will find a tailor-made solution for you or help you to, to take your next steps. Um, but what we are not doing, and this is super, super important, so from level one, level two, level three, you do not, this is super important, you do not introduce your brand, your product or your price um, before level four. So up to level three, you are not talking about your brand or your product or your price. You may subtly introduce it. You may, I said do not. You may subtly introduce it. So on your lead magnet, for example, maybe pop your logo on there, but let's keep it personal. Put your headshot and a bit of a, a personal biog about yourself, but there's no branding. There's no product. You're not selling a product in this. You're not putting any prices on there because anyone from level one to three if you were too pushy with it, if you were too buy my shit marketing with them, if you were like, if you if you're giving them, you know, everything, um, too soon you will scare them off and they'll run away. Okay. So level four then is we're starting to become brand aware. So now they're in our they they are technically in our inner circle. So they're in our Facebook group or now we've liked them on LinkedIn. Maybe they've come along to an event which we put on or maybe sat uh, sat a consultation with us. Um, and level four audiences now have everything which they need to start making a buying decision, okay? So remember, like levels levels one to three can take months or even years to take prospects through. Um, and it's not until level four that they're actually gonna be starting to think about whether it's a good fit or not. So they're still de deciding whether they prefer you over your competition, okay? So again, if you're too pushy and your competition aren't, it's likely that you might turn them off and they'll go to your competition instead, okay? So these are really subtle, like, little nuances of, like, the whole sales process and advertising process that most people overlook because they're too too busy trying to rush through the process, rush to the sale and take people's money. And at that point, it's not about your audience, it's about you. And if all your sales process is, is about you, then you are always going to lose the sale. It's always going to be a disappointment for the both of you. It's like a lose-lose situation. So, but the, the key thing is, is here, and the reason why that is such as, uh, is the case is because the one thing which they lack is the confidence in your ability to deliver what you say that you're going to be able to deliver. Um, which means that results, social proof, case studies and testimonials, uh, client success is absolutely vital at this stage. So if you're not getting Google reviews, if you're not getting video testimonials, if you're not taking snapshots of client wins and putting them somewhere on your website and shouting about them or making it easy for um, your audience to, um, to for, you know, for you to be able to uh, send them a link to tell them to go and have a look at the client success page with all of this social proof on it. Um, then again, there is a potential that you're not going to be able to build up their confidence enough to be able to um, take that next step uh, with you and buy your product. The key thing is here, well, I mean, this is really throughout the whole process, but this is really important at this stage, is you've got to assume a position of leadership. Level four audiences are primed to receiving an offer from you at this point. So you need to put an offer in front of them. Don't assume at, the, at any stage, they're just going to turn around and say, here's my money, I'm in. Sometimes it happens, but I would suggest 90% of the time it doesn't. Uh, your audience need to be led throughout the entire process, including when they're about to make that buying decision. If they're not asking the right questions, you have got to lead them into asking the right questions. If they're missing a piece of information, you've got to lead them and give them that piece of information. 
if the decision is that they need to go to your competition instead of you, if you can't deliver what you say you can, what you know, what that person wants, well, then you have to give them what they need. You have to assume that position of leadership, uh, take, you know, take the moral high ground and give them the contact details of your competition. Um, this is super, super important, but you have to be the one assuming that position of leadership and um, giving them, putting that offer in front of them. And then finally, we can then move into level five. So this is where they've kind of already made their buying decision basically at this point. And what they're most interested in to know is now the features of your product, how it's delivered and what the um, uh, how much it's going to cost. So, um, you know, but again, don't assume they automatically know what the next steps in the process are. So they might know what your product is, what the results are, if they buy it, how much it is, what the next steps are. Um, but don't assume they're automatically going to take those next steps. You actually need to um, lead, take them by the hand and lead them through it. It's um, something along the lines of, um, cool, so here is what's going to happen next. I'm going to send over the agreement to you, which you need to sign within the next couple of days. It could be, oh, well, actually, I know you need a couple of days to make a decision, so how about we book in a follow-up call in two days' time? Uh, where we can discuss that and you can t kind of tell me whether it's a yes or a no. Um, also, it's really important at this stage to ask them what they need to see from you in order to help make their final decision. Because again, what happens a lot of the time is people will hide behind proposals. And um, when somebody says, oh, can you send me some more information? At that point, I always say something along the lines of and whether this is on a sales call or actually in Messenger. Listen, what do you need to see from me in order to make this, if you had to make the decision now, what sort of questions would you ask me? Because quite often they don't actually know what questions they've got to ask. And so they need a bit of a prompt and a bit of help, a bit of coaching through that that final part of the, the sort of decision-making process. Um, and, then, and then the last bit is um, make sure you interject periods of silence. This allows people time to process stuff. So if you're kind of moving through the five levels in Messenger, for example, or even on a call, uh, you need to give them... And, and it'll feel awkward, but you need to just, rather than bombarding them with words or messages or proposals or whatever it might be, and then following up like aggressively, people actually sometimes just need a little, even just little bits of time and space, periods of seconds, minutes, hours, or even days to make their decision. So in, interject on purpose, you know, using that um, position of leadership that you've assumed uh, interject those periods of silence at um, strategic points in the process. You've got to be patient at this point. Listen to their concerns and address them. And then only then, once you've gone through all of those levels of initiative, can you actually close the deal. And the deal, the closing the deal looks like, great. So, uh, you know, here are the next steps. I need you to sign the agreement. Uh, can I take your credit card? Can we book in your first coaching or consulting session? Or whatever it might be. So close the deal. A uh, few things to note though, um, uh, and this is just a little bit of a recap. At no point in the examples that I've given you in those five levels will you have seen any kind of like buy my shit type marketing, right? Th these five levels are, are like the five fundamental steps of advertising. If you understand these steps, you will understand your audience and you will know how to talk to them without doing any kind of buy my shit type marketing. Now, I'm not suggesting any of you will be doing this, but um, I do occasionally see it. This has to be about your client educating your client, delivering value, jab, 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 right hook. At the, at the strategic moments, then start to lead them and pull them through your process. This is not about you. This is all about your client. You've got to ensure that the customer journey is seamless, no matter what level of market sophistication your prospect is at. Um, you can't, so what I mean by this is you can't just skip levels. You can't just like, um, like you know, what you want is, um, if regardless of whether they come in at a one, a two, a three, a four, or five, um, like if they come in at a two, you have to build them up through a, a two, three, four, and a five. If they come in at a five, great. You know, there's no real build up. You're just in there, but you can't then jump back to more education stuff at a two because for whatever reason, they're, they're confused or it will confuse them. <clears throat> so you can't skip levels. You've got to move your audience through each of those levels of initiative um, in order to help them make, an, make a decision. And at any point, don't assume anything. You cannot assume that you're... Um, uh, your prospects know anything about you or understand your process. They, 
They don't really understand what results they're going to get. They don't know like what the next steps are going to be. Like you just got to assume they know absolutely nothing about you, your business, your solution uh, and, and everything like that. However, I've got one correction. The, the, there is only one thing that you can assume and that is a position of leadership throughout. So um, remember what I've said to you pr previously about there being a sequence. So a customer journey, it's a linear sequence of steps which you take your your prospect through from the first point of them uh, finding out about you right the way through to sale, delivery and beyond. It's, it's linear and you can't allow the client just to jump backwards and forwards along that line. Remember, it's, it's consider it to be like a timeline. And some of you may believe in this, but I certainly don't believe in time travel. You can't jump about in time. So see see that um, uh, that customer journey as um, that sequence of events as as linear in terms of time. You can't jump people about. So if somebody asks for price and they're a level one or a level two or a level three, for example, don't tell them the price because you need to get them up to a level five before you give them the price. So you've got to you've got to just say, okay, well actually. Before I give you the price, there's a few things which I need to know about you and we've got to see whether it's a good fit. So don't jump people about on that sequence. Assume that position of leadership. Don't be led by the client, okay? That's super, super important. And listen, if you've got any questions about the um, uh, those five levels of market sophistication, uh, especially from implementing it from an advertising perspective, then uh, do jump into the group and tag me into it. Ask me any questions which you've got about it. Um, I can guarantee, right, what I've just told you over the last 20 minutes, this is one of the reasons why I have managed to, and I haven't mastered marketing by any stretch, but it's one of the reasons why people see my advertising and marketing and see it as successful because I'm not doing, or I'm doing, I have done it in the past, but I'm not doing that by my shit type marketing. I'm just here about adding value, uh, tapping into people's problems, offering up a solution, whether it's mine or somebody else's and taking them through it a very staged process. I'm incredibly patient. Um, I have clients who it's taken two or even three years before they've signed up and come onto the program. I, I'm in this, it's, this is a long game for me. This should be a long game for you. So if you're implementing the five levels of market sophistication well, it should be taking a long time to convert prospects through into consultations. It should be taking a long time to... Um, uh, to get clients booked on from that very first interaction which you have with them. So there you go. You know how to get hold of me if you've got any questions. Uh, more than happy to take those. Hope you enjoyed that and I will catch up with you all soon.